action. All right. Welcome back to this week's episode of What's the Vibe with Katie and Amy. We are back in vibing. We're vibing, all right. <laughs> I've drank a quarter Mountain Dew. I'm ready. Yes, yes. So we did a two-part last week, had two special episodes, and then uh, got to hear about prom mom and please put your babies in the box if you don't want them. Yeah, that is a, or just that use is, birth control. We don't even get to that I point. Mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, I don't have any updates. You do? You? Nothing. No? Nothing. Then what is the vibe? The vibe this week is family, twins. Shut up. Is yours about twins? No, but I when I was trying to make mine, what's the vibe? I always pick my words beforehand. I kept wanting to say twins, but it's more like daughters. Okay. But <laughs> mine's twins and just kind of mystery. Okay. Um, this is a story that I'm gonna tell you about that I've been interested in for a long time. Really? But the information is kind of sporadic. So I'm gonna do my best to okay. tell you about it. And then maybe we can find the movie because there is a movie oh. about this. But, you know, movies are fictionalized a little bit. So. so this is a true story. Yeah, this is a true story okay. about a set of twins. Um, their names are June and Jennifer. June and Jennifer. What were your twins' names? I forget. My twins' names were <laughs> Pauline, E.P., no, Pauline Esther Letterer, and then Esther Pauline Letterer. Yeah. Remember, they yeah. swapped yeah. their names. That's so weird. I do like the... J and J. 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 Yeah. yeah, that is fun. So twins. Okay. June and Jennifer Gibbons. Gibbons. Were born in 1963. Okay. To Barbadian parents. You know what like Barbadian Ray, parents like are? Like Rihanna? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 That is exactly what I thought when I read that. <laughs> I mean, yes. that's my only that's my only connection to Barbados. Yeah. Unless we want to talk Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can. I mean, yeah, I'm into it. The twins had three siblings, and their names were Greta, David, and Rosie. Their parents raised them in the UK, so first in England, and then they moved to Wales. Okay. The twin In 1971, the twins were eight years old, and they started a new school in southwest England. Which was terrible for them. I can you guess why? Because <laughs> no, they were the only children of color in the school. Oh, okay. So they were bullied terribly. Aww. People would pull their hair, call what them names. Is? This was 1971. Yeah. Here's a picture of them. They're cute as can be, Katie. Look at them. Oh, they are cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, those poor girls. But they were different. Yeah. And di being different sometimes is not good. I mean, twins is enough to get somebody's attention. But mm -hmm. especially in that time, that's yeah. not hurt. Yeah. So the twins were inseparable. They were each other's best friend at this time because they were really all they had. Yeah. They were in the same grade. They're both being bullied and they s develop their own way of communicating with each other. Okay. That was described as like a sped up version. Let me see what they said of, I'm going to mispronounce this, Bajon Creole. So I I've been saying that Creole yes. way too much lately. You really have. I'm nope. going to need you to cut it out. It was, it's just an interesting word and an interesting dialect i don't even know if it's a language i don't know i'll have to do some research on that but no one could really understand them and they did not care okay i mean <laughs> we should come up with our own language yes, yes. <laughs> I, can just, I can just picture us like it works how long would it take to get institutionalized oh my have? gosh <laughs> probably not very no so one year at school, it was in, in 1974, a medic was administering vaccinations to all the kids in the school. Okay. And he noticed what he called their impassive behavior. 
Okay. Just not interacting, very with, withdrawn into themselves. And if they spoke, it was only to each other in a language no one knew. Interesting. Um, he notified a child psychologist because he was that concerned about it. Did the rest of the family know this language? No. This was something they made up? It was something they made up. Okay. The twins began seeing a succession of therapists who tried unsuccessfully to get them to communicate with others. Hmm. At one point, they were sent to separate boarding schools in an attempt to break the isolation and the bond that they had. Oh, that would be hard. They both became catatonic when separated. Catatonic. And entirely withdrawn when parted. Like, just wouldn't speak to anybody at all. So they did eventually put them back together. Man. The Christmas they turned 16, they both received a diary as a Christmas present. Okay. And They're still doing this at 16? Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, the diary really inspired them to write. Okay. And they began writing soap opera style stories. Interesting at 16. Oh, it gets more interesting. What? The stories would star young men and women who exhibit strange and criminal behavior. Sometimes it was like really sexual. Okay. Like they, they were just very different. During the same time that they were teenagers, they began um, experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Okay. And just really acting out. And then they started committing crimes. First, like theft and vandalism, but then arson. Oh. And that got them locked up. Due to the arson, they were both admitted to what was called Broadmoor Hospital, a high security mental health hospital. Once there, they stopped speaking to anyone else and would only communicate with each other. Like, because before they would occasionally talk to their little sister, Rosie. Yeah. Um, and their parents. But once they're nobody else. They still can't separate them? No. I mean, I'm glad that they have each other to lean on. But that's almost, like, it's too much. Yeah. Here's a picture of them um, there at Broadmoor Hospital. Okay. I mean, they look like they're... I mean, they look normal. Normal, yeah. Know, like I was normal. Just gonna say living life, but that doesn't really describe a whole lot. I mean, yeah, but it's yeah. hard to. But people with mental health issues can look normal. Yeah. So while there, they one of their therapists uh, did write a book on them, and so some of the quotes that came out about them are all from her. Whether or not they're true or not. I mean, sometimes you Fair. have to want, especially writers, they want to sensationalize stuff. Yes. But um, she was quoted as saying that Jennifer had said the only way, because Jennifer and Gina are the two twins, mm -hmm. she had told the, this therapist or this novelist, the only way we could ever live a normal life is if one of us dies. What? I mean, how is, first of all, how? Because if you're separated, you can't even. They're shutting normal. down if they're separated. But they have, they both have this understanding that the other was holding the other one back. What? It's so strange. Let each other go. You know, I know. what I mean? Like, they've developed that much of a dependency on each Very other. Very codependent. <laughs> In March of 1993, the twins were transferred to Broadmoor to the more open Caswell Clinic in Bridgington, well, Wales. Sorry. On the way there, Jennifer was laying her head in June's lap, and June said she was sleeping, but with her eyes open. How's that? On arrival, Jennifer could not be roused from her slumber. What? She was taken to the hospital where she immediately died. What? Of what they determined was acute myocarditis, a sudden inflammation of the heart. Just randomly. She didn't like take something. In. She there wasn't... were no drugs or poison in her system. What? 
So that was June that died. Jennifer died. Oh, Jennifer. Okay. Yeah. After Jennifer's death, June was soon dismissed from the mental health hospital. What? She was, quote unquote, healed? Normal? She was quoted as saying, I'm free. And went on. Still alive today. What? And communicates and lives in the outside world. And it's as if nothing, none of that, her twin, none of it ever existed or happened. Yes. Why did that happen? (laughs) Isn't that so strange? I still have questions. I know. That's what I'm saying. There's so little information about this, but then what is out there is so strange. So I've heard of these guys before. I haven't, I didn't know all of that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know one of them died. It was more of like something like, oh, maybe I should talk about that on the podcast or like interesting things Mm -hmm. that I was trying to find. But how can you be that dependent on somebody and then it just shuts like a, like a switch has been flipped. Yeah. And I understand the trauma because they're horribly bullied and I was, I, I still, I saw my high school bully the other day and was triggered. So I did. I did. I can't stand her. Uh, so I, I mean, I imagine if I had a sister, that would have made it better. I would have had somebody to lean on and somebody, but they just took it too far. It's so weird. It's like creepy yet intriguing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know how I said they're, they were super bonded. They would only yeah. talk to each other, but there were times when they would fight brutally with each other and they'd have to be separated. But then once separated, total catatonic, total despondency. But when Jen, after Jennifer died, it was like June accepted it immediately. It's like, so obviously I'm not a twin, (laughs) but I've heard like, one twins in California and the other ones on the East mm-hmm. coast. They're both adults live in their life, but maybe one twin passes and the other twin can just feel something, mm-hmm. not even know that they've passed and they just, they know it's almost like they knew she was going to die. Right. They had talked about it for a while. Right. And, and according to this biographer on the girls, which I might have her name. I was just going to ask, you know, like, what the title was or anything like that. No, we can find it really easy though. Um, It was like a pact they had made and Jennifer allegedly had said, I'm willing to make the sacrifice. What? But how do you just make yourself die of a heart problem? And why are you okay with that? Yeah. And why is your twin okay with that? Yeah, it's so interesting. I, I would love to find the movie. It's, of course, this is so old. She died in 1993. So, wow. I, so and sometimes it can be hard to find these old things. I've, I've been looking for this old dateline forever, and I can't find it. For so, what? I've mentioned it on the oh, show okay. before. Um, and then I told Josiah about it, and he started looking for it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I get I get so wrapped up in that mm-hmm. and stuff like that too. It makes me want to try to find the sister. Oh yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting. I think she still lives in Wales, and I don't think she married or anything. But that'd be interesting. We'd have to give an update. My research has been a struggle without internet lately. I'm but, sorry, but I do what I can on my lunch breaks. <laughs> I feel I feel like it's still we're still going strong. Now, yeah, it's so. interesting. I uh, want to know more about them. Yeah. I, Go on a deep dive. If you know something more about the silent twins, let us know. Oh, that's so crazy. Okay. So, oh my gosh, what is your vibe? What's the vibe? The vibe is family. Okay. The vibe is daughters. (laughs) More girls. More girls. The vibe is the 70s through the 90s. Uh, Pretty solid time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's me. And the wife is heartbreak. Oh. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things that happened this year. Not this year. Oh, the okay. year my story takes. Okay. This, the, the year my story starts. And you tell me if you know what year this was. Oh, okay. The Gambler by Kenny Rogers was <sighs> released. The Gambler. Is that 
I want to know, you know, wait, you got to know when to hold them. No when to fold them. No when to walk away. <laughs> no when to run. <laughs> you have a couch. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sitting at the table. Okay, I like the gambler. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, Trapper Keepers were introduced. Oh, okay, this is 80-something. Van Halen topped the charts. Okay. Garfield made his debut. Mm-hmm. And Grease was released. Oh, my gosh. What year is it? Gosh, I really thought Trapper Keepers came out in the 80s. But now when you said Grease, I'm thinking 78? Yes! Yes! Yes. Okay. That was a fun way to introduce the year. Yes, that was great. Yeah, 1978. Okay. So, my story story starts November 29th. Okay. Okay. And again, I feel like you're gonna know this story. Okay. So, I might even say the first name, and you're gonna be like, "Got it." Oh, I am a crime junkie, so I maybe. In a little rural town of Wachula, Florida. A little baby mm. by the name of Arlena Twiggs was born. You know the story, don't you? It's a good one. It is a good one. It's a good one. Arlena was born with a congenital heart defect. Didn't really stop her from thriving. She still had a really great childhood. She had lots of brothers and sisters to play with. She was always really happy. Um, but her parents knew and doctors had told them that somewhere down the road, she is going to need open heart surgery. So fast forward a couple of years. Arlena is nine years old and the doctors and her parents decide that this is the time she, she needs to have open heart surgery. So they did some like pre-surgery work. They did some labs, got her prepped, took her back. She had a very long surgery. I don't know if you've ever had an open heart surgery. No. <laughs> Me either. No. But uh, one of our fans, Aunt Kim, has had oh, open heart okay. surgery. Who's recovering well. So that's good. good. That story turned out much better. We <laughs> love you, Aunt Kim. I'm sorry to say the same did not for Arlena. She... The surgery was successful, but there were complications afterwards while she was healing that caused her to pass away mm -hmm. at the age of nine. Gosh. Her parents were a wreck, but not for the reason you might think. So when they did the test before they took her back from surgery, it was discovered that Arlena had a different blood type than her parents. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's bad. Bad. I'm so excited for this refresher because I, I do know it, but it's been so long. So the doctors were questioning, who are these people and how did they get this baby? Yeah. These are not her parents. Oh, my gosh. And her parents, indirect quote, said, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's my daughter. Mm -hmm. I gave birth to her. I think I would know she's not my daughter. Um, we've raised her. We've loved her for nine years. I think I would know that's my kid. But the doctors were like, no, it's not. Oh my gosh, I can not imagine. <laughs> it would be so, mm. I, yeah. So pretty quickly, they did genetic testing to prove that Arlena was their daughter and she wasn't. They were so confused and still grieving. Right. Her child has just passed away. But now you're telling me that's not my child? That's insane. This is such a tragic story. It's terrible. Very quickly, they're like, where's my daughter? Mm -hmm. This is my daughter that passed. But where is my daughter? Yeah. I gave birth gives me to goosebumps somebody. and I've I even know. heard this. So they started doing research. Like who was at the hospital that night? What other babies were born? And as it turned out, there were only two white infants born at the hospital that week. 
Arlene being one of them. Ar- Arlena. Arlena. The second baby, Kimberly Mays, was born December 2nd, 1978, just three days after Arlena Twiggs. The Arlena's family knew there, I mean, now they know they've got to find the family. Yeah. They've got to find where is Kimberly Mays at. Gosh, so messy. So messy. Yeah. And so still, like, they're still, their daughter just passed. They loved her yes. for nine years. That was their family. She loved them. She yeah. was probably like, you know, they were comforting That's her. All she would just she knew. so sad. So they tracked down the Mays family. And sadly... By this time, it's 1987, Kim's mother, Barbara, has already passed away. So So it's just Mr. Mays and his daughter, Kimberly. And he does have a wife. Oh, he has. He's remarried. Okay. Yeah. So they meet. Kim's father, Bob, sits her down. At nine years old. She's also nine. You know nine what I mean? She might be old. ten at this point, but still she is a child. Yeah. And so tells her what happened. There's a family who his daughter passed away. And when that happened, they realized that you might be their daughter. There was a mistake at the hospital. Mm. He did end the conversation by saying, like, you know, no matter what happens, you're always gonna be my daughter, though. Like I brought you home. I've cared for you. I've raised for you. Even if a test comes back and says that you're not my daughter, you're my daughter. And he never got to meet his daughter, his biological daughter. So the story spread quickly with a media and a news sensation. How did this happen? At first. Yeah. Yeah. How did this happen? How? When they first came and like contacted Bob and came to him, he he didn't want a test. He did not want, as far as he knew, that was his daughter. Mm-hmm. How hard would it be to be like, that's not your daughter. You do have a daughter though, but she passed away. Like, I mean, I'd be the same way if somebody came and said any one of my kids was <laughs> not my. I, I I just brought tears oh, to my eyes. No. I'm going to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Oh. They did ultimately agree, and it was proven that Kimberly was biologically a daughter of the Twigs Mm. couple. And Arlena was biologically the daughter of the Mays couple. So. Wow. How? In the beginning, the Twigs family immediately blamed the Mays. They said, you guys did this. Not only did you guys do it, I think your grandparents, so Barbara's parents, helped. I think you guys switched the children, and you did this on purpose. (sighs) Bob went so far as to take a lie detector test, and he got an attorney, and he passed. They did not. They had nothing to do with it. No. That's that's unfair of the Twigs family to start pointing fingers. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that part. So, where are we going to turn next? The doctor, the yeah. hospital, the staff that's supposed to be caring for these babies. In 1978, we're, I mean, like today, babies are banded. Right. Like, they have like a little house arrest monitor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that baby serving time, right? And you have to like read off your numbers on your bracelet before they'll. I mean, that was even in the nineties. But I mean, Maggie just had a baby, and yeah, I I could hear her being like seven two five nine, and they'd be like, "Okay, it's yeah. your baby." So how, Katie? How? They, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> okay, how. okay. I'm gonna tell you what the what the Twigs family thought. So once they moved on past thinking it was the maze. They started assuming it was the doctor in the hospital. Their theory, which later turned out to be true. Oh my gosh, okay. Was that 
Barbara, when she had her baby, Barbara had been trying to have a baby for years <sighs> and she just couldn't. And so when Arlena was born to them, they felt that it wasn't fair because she had a heart condition and they knew she wasn't going to live forever. Oh. Not forever, but live a long, healthy life. So why did they have to fight all these years to have a baby and now the baby they get is not going to live? So the Twigs family already had five kids. So in the doctor's mind, it's... The doctor? The doctor and the staff. It was the doctor's idea. Yes. Un but this family has enough kids they can spare one. Essentially, is what he indirect quote. That's disgusting. Look at all the pain he's caused. Ultimately. And how do you think? First of all, how do you think you're not gonna catch that? If a baby has a heart condition, knowing it's gonna be in and out of the hospital. He didn't think it through. He didn't think about blood types and in 78, what was DNA testing like? Not only that, but how many other times did he do <gasps> Oh, my that's God. The, that's the next thing that made me think. Like, did he, is, is this the first time he's done this? What a God complex to think you can make that decision. Right. Oh, that's disgusting. So the families both sued the hospital and were awarded multi-million dollar settlements that the hospital would not admit fault. So... They basically were like, no contest. Right. Oh. So they found this out. They won their case. Now what? Yeah, now what? Got a little girl stuck in the middle. Right. So Regina, Arlena's mother, is what I'm going to call her because that's who raised her. Mm hmm she was raised in an orphanage and she was adopted by an abusive family when she was little. So family was so important to her. Mm -hmm. She wanted to have a relationship with her biological daughter and pushed as much as she could to see her. She you can't blame her. No, but it's mm -hmm. so hard because Bob was concerned. Like he was hesitant. I guess is, he's is probably scared he's going to lose his daughter and he doesn't know these people. Right. And they accused him of a terrible crime. Right. Ugh. He was concerned about the emotional impact it would have on Kimberly mm -hmm. at such a young age. His, in his mind, he just wanted to protect her. Mm -hmm. like, even if being with this family wouldn't necessarily be bad. Kim did go on to have five visits with the family and the five visits were actually on home video. And I guess that they show, I've not seen them obviously, but her like meeting her siblings and getting along and laughing mm -hmm. and hugging them and having a good time with them. Like she's an only child. So now she's got siblings. Yes. It did start to change a little bit, though, because I can't imagine how this would just be like, okay, we'll, we'll share. Basically. Right, right. And did they live in the same state still? I mean, they delivered. I think so. Okay. So later in the 90s, families were doing, were both being interviewed. And Kim even stated at one point that Regina asked her, asked him, Kim to call her mom and went so far as to ask if it would be okay if she called her Arlena. Oh, God. Why? Why that's disrespectful to Arlena? Right. I think it's because in her mind, this is Arlena. Oh. Like she had Arlena. That she had this baby right here. Mm -hmm. That was going to be her name. Oh, no. You know that that I mean? feels icky for some reason. Okay. Um, Kim did call her mom, mm -hmm. but she said, she, you can't call me Arlena. Like, that's not who I am. That's not my Good name. for and her. She didn't. She did end up calling her Kim mm -hmm. and respecting that. But after her, the fifth visit with the Twigs family, and Bob said, you can't go back. He said that Kim's attitude towards her home was starting to change and her grades were starting to suffer. 
And a lot. he was probably scared that, like you said, he was going to lose her. But Regina and Ernest, they could not go on knowing that Kimberly was out there and they don't have a relationship with her. So now they're taking it to court. As if this child has not Man. been through enough. Just give her a couple of years. She'll be an adult. Yeah. Let her, let it settle in. Yeah. Let her breathe It's a so hard in the moment to think like that. Yeah. But. Mm. So they started a legal case to get court ordered visitation. By the summer, Kim, I think at this time was around 14 or so, ended up petitioning a judge for all I could find was the term illegal divorce from her biological parents, the twigs. Okay. That was the only way that she felt she was going to be able to deny them rights to visitation. To just get them to back off a little bit. Gosh, they should have just given her room to write. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but that's so sad. Her case was granted and she won. And she's been quoted now to say as an adult, when she looks back, she didn't realize what a big decision that she was making. Yeah. And she regrets doing that. Yeah. In November of 93, so the same year she got the divorce from the twins. I've family, heard of that before. I try to get, like, find more information, but I don't know if it's something that, like, a term they used to use. Yeah. Or, it sounds very similar to, like, emancipation. Yeah. Like, just, like... But yeah, it's, a, it's unique. So that same year, a CNA by the name of Patsy Webb had worked at the hospital and she was dying. And uh. she decided to come forward with information on the case. Her son said that she wanted to have a clear conscience when she passed away. She said that Dr. Palmer did, in fact, Tell her to switch the bracelets. She did not say that it was because of the reason to give one a healthy baby and one a sick baby. I she didn't have to, though, I don't think. Right. You know what I mean? Right. She stated that she did not switch the bracelets, but it weighed on her conscience because she knew and didn't do anything about it. She was scared. She thought she would lose her job. She thought she would lose her insurance, and she probably would have. Yeah, a hostile work environment yeah. much. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So by the time she came forward with this information, the statute of limitations had already run out to be able to pursue it. How is there a statute of limitations on baby switching? I don't know. They thought of everything. <laughs> they the really hell? Have. They're like, this part has been committed, and we're going to make a statute. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Weird. Ugh. So nothing. He never was he. Oh, they pay the hospital had to pay him a lot of money, but that was it. Did he still work? I wonder. I don't know. I didn't actually hmm. find any information on him. That's a good question. I know. Nobody would want him as a right. OBGYN. I'd be like, no, no. thank you. <laughs> so Kim, as she was growing up, like I've read some articles and seen some interviews with her. I think she may have been on Dr. Phil even said that she had so much pressure and so much weight on her as a child because now she's like she's trying to please everybody oh my gosh it's like the child of divorced parents only a hundred times worse not only that she didn't so barbara passed when she was two years old she did not even know that oh she thought her stepmom her? was her mom father quickly got remarried and when she was six years old sat her down and said cindy's not your real mom your real mom passed away when you were a baby six years old. six years old to tell a child that i don't i mean unless how she's, do you handle that? i feel I like you should just always but how do you squeeze that into the conversation all the time i mean you just make it normal i would think mm -hmm. like that's a picture of your mom. Yes. Or like yes. always make it in the, always keep her there in the yes, conversation. Yes, that's smart. So now she's lost her mom. Oh my gosh. 
And she's finding out she's got, she's six. And I have a dead mom. Yeah. And now I have a, a now real I have mom. another mom. That's insane. Not only that, Cindy, her stepmom, and her father got a divorce. And he quickly remarried again to another woman in 1990, which was in the middle of everything. Remind you, she divorced the Twigs in 1993. Oh, my God. So, mom, stepmom, new mom, real mom, new mom. Like, how do you process all of that? Dad, settle down, put it away. Seriously. Like, give it a minute. As she got older, she said that her dad was very controlling. She just did not have a good relationship with him. She ended up running away several times. Mm. At 15 years old, she ended up in a shelter. And then... Moved into the Twigs' home for a year and a half. She was there just before, until just before her 18th birthday, left her home, got married, and had a son. So she was just boom, Um. boom, boom. At the same time that she's getting married and having her son, she decides to sell her interest of the money that they were awarded from the settlement to a new an annuity company in a structured settlement. And now she will not have access to that money until she's 70 years old. Why would she do that? She just didn't understand what she was doing. I don't know. No one would do that on purpose. I think if I had to guess, she probably got some money in the moment. Mm-hmm. And so it seemed like a smart deal. Didn't read the fine print about how long they were going to hold the rest of 70. 70. 70. Well, she and was born in 78, so she's 45-ish now. Right. And not to be a Debbie Downer or anything, but how many people even make it to 70 today? I be you know real what careful because I'd want to... <laughs> Or at least have something set up to know where that money is going if you do pass. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably a closet in there mm-hmm. if you pass it. <laughs> oh my gosh. She needed a lawyer. She needed a help. lot of help. That's so sad. As an adult, she's continued to struggle. She ended up divorcing her first husband. And not surprisingly, she didn't know how to be a mom. So she ended up, her son ended up being raised by his father and family. She was eventually able to get back on her feet, remarried, and went on to have five children. Mm. I read a couple of different things, like in between that time, you know, where she was struggling and she had just turned 18 and married, had a kid, and then got divorced. Until she got remarried, she lived a lot of lives. She was homeless for a while Mm. she worked at a dance club for a while she was doing all kinds of different things she never graduated high school so once she got married and had kids like she finally felt like she was on a positive path the relationship that she had with everybody in her life was really strained her father Passed away in 2012. She was not on speaking terms with him and hadn't been in contact for several years. Darlena, which would be her new stepmom, she did get in contact with and she'll talk to her on occasion. She says Mm -hmm. things are civil and good, but they're not. not, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she has since become estranged from the Twigs family but has been quoted to say that she feels a lot of love and sympathy for what they've lost. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Huh. And, um, where, what state does she live in today? Do you know? I, today I do not. Wow. I do imagine she probably moved like quite a bit. Yeah. Man. So that is a real life. Switched mm-hmm. at birth. Mm-hmm. The sadly did not have a strong or 
good ending. Not that you can in that situation, no. but I mean, had Arlena lived, like they might have been able to have one large family and yes. all this, but that was just, it was not the fam. One family was grieving. So double. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, you told that so good. Thank you. I had heard that before, but I, it was good to have that refresher and you did it beautifully. Thank you. I've been holding on to this one for a while. That was a good one. For a Thank while. you so much. Yes. Oh, the tragedy. <laughs> she says as she's smiling. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh the tragedy. <laughs> it's kind of like the Titanic. I just want you all to know that I am very upset for the Arlena and May's family, regardless sure. of how much Amy is smiling. Yes. This is my years of working in dentistry. I can't. <laughs> I remember the one of the private practices I worked at. It was literally like people got written up. Well, they got threatened to be written up. <laughs> okay. Nobody really got written up, but like he would say, I'll write people up if you're not smiling up there. Like, this is our business. So now, like, no matter what, I'm like, <laughs> I don't like that. It's not the worst news ever. <laughs> <laughs> it really, like you become programmed. You do, yeah. But yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, everybody looks better when they're smiling. They do. Look how they happy do. you look. All right. Well, that's another episode. And thank you so much. And stay vibing.